uh, I'll be mainly uh, talking about the ophthalmogenetics. Uh, I will first uh, discuss uh, the some cases regarding the ophthalmogenetics. The, uh, the first one uh, would be the early onset uh, glaucomas. So the glaucoma is uh, a group of eye disorders which will ultimately affect your vision and it will progressively damage your optic nerve insertion to the eye and it will start from the periphery and ultimately leading to the blindness so usually the glaucoma uh, early onset glaucoma means uh, if the glaucoma occurs before the age of 40 years so as you all can see on this picture so this is the normal eye so the aqueous humor is produced somewhere here and it is put uh, to the anterior compartment of the eye and it is drained through these channels. So either the production is more or this channel is blocked, so you all will get the glaucoma conditions. So the pressure will equally go here and it will apply on the retina and ultimately uh, lead for the blindness. So when we talk about the early onset uh, glaucomas, uh, if it is occurs, uh, without any other associated abnormalities in the body, the congenital abnormalities, uh, before the age of five years, you call it as the primary congenital glaucoma. But if it is occurring in the childhood or the early adulthood, you call it as the juvenile open angle glaucomas. So when you look at the frequencies, so the primary congenital glaucomas in one in 10,000. So may, these conditions are mainly uh, located or gathered around the Middle East countries. The juvenile open angle glaucoma is in somewhere around 1 in 50,000. And this open angle glaucoma, if, we, uh, if it is occurring after 40 years, uh, when we take the world population, it is somewhere around 1% of the world population. Now, when we come to the genetics about this uh, early onset glaucomas, uh, the open angle glaucoma, uh, nearly 10 to 33% of the people who are having juvenile open uh, angle glaucomas, uh, one such uh, gene is MYOC gene. So why this MYOC gene is important means this MYOC gene produces, it's a structural gene which will produce a protein called myelosin. This myelosin will work with the other uh, proteins in the eye and help to form the trabecular meshwork and as well as the ciliary bodies. So if there is a mutation in this uh, MYOC gene, uh, this will lead to uh, the uh, trabecular meshwork and uh, the structural formation defects. And also another 20 to 40 percent of the population in the primary congenital glaucomas, uh, CYP1B1 uh, gene is responsible. So this is another cytochrome P450 gene. Uh, again, uh, this will uh, work uh, along with the myelosin protein, which I described previously. And it will also uh, go for this trabecular meshwork and the ciliary body defects. But uh, when you go through the literature, it shows that uh, CYP1B1 uh, protein gene, uh, the exact mechanism is still not very well understood. So uh, either the production exists as I mentioned uh, before or is there is uh, if there is a draining defect uh, which can lead to the production of the glaucoma. Now when we look at the inheritance patterns of these glaucomas, so there are different inheritance patterns. Uh, the primary congenital glaucoma is having an autosomal recessive pattern. So when you look at the juvenile ones, juvenile open angle glaucoma is having an autosomal dominant pattern. So, so when uh, in some families uh, with the primary congenital glaucoma will also so, show uh, inheritance patterns of autosomal dominant pattern. So we have autosomal dominant as well as recessive patterns in this glaucomas. So the investigation wise, it's uh, the standard test. It's uh, next generation sequencing. 
so we have uh, additional to the uh, the two genes that i have mentioned there are another 30 odd uh, genes which are responsible so uh, ngs we can do uh, for the selected exons and uh, it is available at us the uh, these panels are early onset glaucoma uh, gene sequencing panels are available at this us uh, laboratory how to find these uh, laboratories are so there is a website in the ncbi uh, genetic test registry so either you can search by the test or the condition or the gene or what if you know the lab you can uh, go to this uh, site and uh, test whatever the test that you all uh, want to select so as you all can see here there's a separate tutorial uh, to how to operate this website as well as you can you all can see there are nearly uh, 70000 on test available and so many genes that you all can test so this uh, this website is very useful to find out what are the labs that are doing uh, the particular tests and what are the countries that are doing those specific tests because in that website they especially clearly mention uh, how to send the sample and uh, how to uh, get the reports analyzed the second one i would like to do is the retinitis pigmentosa again it is a progressive vision uh, loss uh, condition uh, which is uh, one of the most commonest inherited uh, genetic disorders which will affect your retina now if you take the frequency of the united states right uh, it is one in uh, 3500 when it when you take it in the europe it is one in uh, 4000 so it is a relatively uh, a common disease uh, this one also they have found out in the literature there are nearly 60 odd genes that are responsible for uh, non syndromic retinitis pigmentosa because retinitis pigmentosa can be associated with other congenital disorders also. So, I am talking about pure and simple retinitis pigmentosa, which is inherited ones. So, we have 60 odd ones. So, in the literature, they say uh, nearly 20 odd genes are having an autosomal dominant patterns of inheritance. So, out of that autosomal dominant ones, the RHO gene is the most common as well again when we look at the genes the six out of that 60 odd genes nearly 35 genes are responsible in the autosomal recessive pattern so out of that autosomal recessive genes ush2a is the commonest one now again when we look at the genes this uh, retinitis pigmentosa there is a small set of genes which are responsible for the inheritance of the x-link format so in the retinitis pigmentosa autosomal dominant recessive as well as x-link pattern is very important because why i am highlighting these things because uh, uh, in the primary healthcare settings when a patient comes it is very important to take the family history and assess the pedigrees for at least for three generations and see whether that's autosomal dominant or recessive and or a x link pattern so then that, that will help uh, for further investigations now when you look at the pathophysiology why this retinitis pigmentosa is important this gene mutations are directly targeting the rods and the corn cells on the retina so the rod cells are responsible for the night vision uh, the cons are responsible for the daytime vision so initially this uh, in the retinitis pigmentosa these rod cells are the ones who will affect first so initially these patients will lose their night vision first then later on it will go on with the cons so gradually this patient first will lose the night vision later on gradually he will start losing his or her daytime vision and ultimately leading to the blindness so now when you look at the investigation formats uh, there are plenty of investigations that we can do there are deletion and duplication analysis sequencing analysis selection uh, exon analysis 
right mutation scanning may uh, analysis so many investigations that we can order certain uh, investigations are available locally but certain ones are available abroad so how to find the place to do the uh, proper investigation again you all can go to the gene uh, uh, testing uh, library that i have shown you all so in that library you can search so as you all can see certain labs in the united states do the deletion and duplication analysis certain labs in the us do only the sequencing analysis so depending on the lab uh, test that you want to do you can select and proceed with the uh, test that you all need uh, now when you come for the the other condition is a retinoblastoma it's a type of a rare eye cancer in uh, early childhood so retinoblastoma uh, rarely it affects both eyes usually it uh, manifests only in you know, one eye so the cardinal feature to identify a child with a retinoblastoma the occurring of the retinoblastoma is this cat's eye reflex or uh, leucorrhea so this uh, light reflex when you flash torch to the eye you all can see a uh, shining appearance as you uh, flash torch on a uh, dog or a cat eye now when you look at the frequency of this retinoblastoma uh, per year in us nearly 250 to 350 uh, uh, patients are diagnosed per annum so it accounts nearly for 4% of all the childhood cancers less than 15 years so it is a little bit of a significant uh, condition now when we look at the genetic uh, background for these mutations for responsible for the uh, retinoblastomas the common one as you all know it's the rb1 or the retinoblastoma 1 gene so it is known as a tumor suppressor gene so i'm not going to go into detail how a cancer will start the tumor suppressor gene how the uh, tumors will arise when the tumor suppressor genes are gone so as you all you all can imagine uh, the pathway the retinoblastoma one uh, which is known as a, one of the tumor suppressor genes right additional to this mutations there are a small percentage of patients coming with some deletions of this retinoblastoma gene and the genes which are along its chromosome 13 so when this deletion happens it will not delete only this rb1 gene so when there's a deletion happening the either side of this particular gene will also get affected so in small percentage when these uh, small uh, deletions happen uh, when you get the retinoblastoma genes these people additional to this retinoblastoma they will also present with intellectual disabilities the growth uh, rate will be slowed and there will be characteristic congenital uh, phases right congenital abnormalities also will present because of this uh, deletion on either side of this particular rb1 gene so inheritance pattern one third of this retinoblastoma is inherited or hereditary that means these genes are present in the reproductive cells also the two third of the retinoblastomas are not inherited so it will not move on to the next uh, generation so it will after fertilization these uh, mutations will happen so the hereditary retinoblastomas are moving in an inherited pattern of autosomal dominant so this autosomal dominant pattern it will move on investigations there are plenty of investigations that we can do for this retinoblastomas there are molecular genetic testing deletion duplications methylization analysis linkage analysis uh, rna analysis sequencing everything we can do to investigate and find out the, these are molecular genetic testing again we can do the cytogenetic testing also that means the fluorescence sensitive hybridization or the fish we can do those things also for the retinoblastoma again how to find a lab to do this test some tests are available locally but some are available abroad 
So again, if you all can go to that site, right? So as you all can see in this uh, picture, so a Canadian lab, they can do the deletion duplication analysis, methylization analysis, RNA analysis, and sequencing also. But uh, a lab in uh, Germany will do the sequencing analysis of selected exons. So depending on whatever the test that you need, so you can go through each and every uh, lab and see whether it is compatible with your requirement and you all can proceed. Right. Now, coming uh, to the end of the presentation with this gene therapy for the ocular diseases. So these days, there are adeno-associated virus is used uh, for this gene therapy. There are animal models that they have done uh, for the uh, for this uh, gene therapy uh, research work. So why we are using this adeno associated virus because adenovirus of course you all know it is uh, one of the viruses which will cause cancers but uh, adeno associated virus this will uh, uh, insert exogenomically and do the needful so these things uh, will not uh, cause any uh, insertional oncogenesis that means because of this virus it will not cause a cancer. So that is why they have selected these adeno-associated viruses. So going to a little bit of uh, uh, into details to show uh, the retinitis pigmentosa. Uh, so they have done a lot of studies uh, using the uh, adeno-associated virus as a vector. So RHO virus, you all can see. So they have used the mouse models uh, and uh, they have seen a lot of good outcome from this uh, gen gen genetic therapies. Uh, uh, then, the, for the retinoblastoma, again, there are uh, uh, certain genes that they have uh, looked at, and there are uh, findings that we have a hope in genetic therapy. So, these are my references, and thank you for your kind listening. Thank you.